The Elite versus Death Triangle in a ladder match, match seven of the series, so essentially just a trio's title match. Uh, Kenny Omega is wearing the IWGP US title here, and they did an insane, crazy ass match here. Uh, that is certainly true. They did seven hundred thousand moves. All of them looked awesome. It was like the best party match you ever saw in your life. They're talking about Kenny Omega's brutal match at the Tokyo Dome, and as they're talking about this, Kenny goes for a big dive as many dodges, and Kenny puts himself through a table on the outside. So it was fifteen straight minutes of complete insanity. It was awesome. It was great. Uh, <laughs> tables were broken. Guys were floating into ladders. Among the biggest spots was uh, Nick Jackson taking the hurricane run off the top rope, which sent him rotating and splashing very hard into a ladder bridge that just about broke his ass. That looked awful. I would have retired immediately, but by which I mean gotten up, made sure my pelvis and hips were still in working order, walked to the back, and never wrestled again. Uh, there actually was some psychology here in that they kept working over Kenny's hands so he couldn't climb well. They put his hand in a ladder and they stomped it. And then later when he tries to climb, they hit the other hand with the hammer because this whole thing is about the hammer. But in the end, everyone's been taken out. Uh, Omega hits a one-winged angel on Phoenix. And it's funny because they're on top of the ladder. And he did it off the ladder onto the mat. And everyone in the crowd could see the spot they were setting up before any of the announcers could. So they're up there and... Phoenix kind of throws one leg over Omega's head, and the crowd immediately starts to gasp because they know what's going to happen. But the announcers didn't know what was going to happen until they were in midair, flying down with the one-winged angel, and uh, a thousand more big spots. Finally, there's Omega alone in the ring, two bad hands. He can barely climb, and every step is torture as he drags himself up this ladder, but he makes it up there, and no one's able to stop him, and eventually he pulls down the belt, and they win. Fuck me sideways. That was incredible. You know, because of the way wrestling is nowadays, like, this is over, and I don't think anyone appreciated it the way it should be appreciated. Like, this was the greatest best of seven in the history of wrestling. Oh, yeah. And even Excalibur is like, we're never going to see one like this again. It's probably right. I mean, we're going to see all sorts of best of sevens, I'm sure, down the road. But one just like this, it's like there was so much other shit going on in wrestling and People being mad about this and that and sale talk and Vince coming back and the holidays and shit. It's like nobody in the moment, I don't think, truly appreciated this for what it was. Except maybe these six guys probably did. But this is one of those deals where 15 years from now, I'll be sitting in a fucking hammock doing the show in Hawaii. And we'll be reviewing year one through five or whatever of Dynamite. And man, we're going to get to the seven or eight shows that the string of two months where they did this best of seven. And we're going to go, holy fucking shit. What a fucking series this was. Jesus. Because it was. Oh, yeah. And uh, all different. All great. Everybody was awesome. Somehow they made it through to the end, even though there were a lot of injuries. Nick Jackson broke his toe early. Wrestled a bunch of matches on a broken toe. Pac broke his fucking nose. And I think he's taking time off to get nasal surgery now. But he gutted his way through like seven fucking matches or whatever. And then Kenny Omega, you know, a week ago, wrestled Will Ospreay in the Tokyo Dome. And Will Ospreay did a cheeky Nando kick and kicked him right in the fucking eyeball. His eyeball swelled up like a grapefruit. And then he fucking flew with that. If you can imagine how that must have felt. Yeah. Then came back and did this fucking match. And uh, just one after another. You do seven matches like this. Imagine how you're feeling. And they did it. And they got through it. And it was fucking great. And they deserve all the credit in the world. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew... Apparently as a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, 
you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.